morning, my friends from all over the world of hemp engineering. Uh, today we have the great pleasure to have with us Mr. Christopher Miliotis. He's based in Melbourne, uh, Australia. I am broadcasting from Perth, Australia. Welcome, Mr. Christo. Thank you very much for welcoming me and inviting me to this uh, webinar. Uh, firstly, uh, but a quick introduction. I first started uh, biodynamic farming in 1971. We were the first to supply organic food into the Sydney market. Then I went and did medicine. Then I did cancer research. Then in 2004, I became aware of carbon farming sequestering carbon into the ground. And then since that time, I've developed uh, 15 different organic agricultural products, uh, ranging from weed killers to pesticides to ways of drawing down carbon dioxide, methane, nitrogen into the soil. And I've devised a method which includes 12 approaches to drawing greenhouse gases from the atmosphere fixing them in the ground, making them bioavailable for plants. And basically, uh, my calculations are conservatively that on only 5% of the land, using these 12 methods, or most of them at least, we can draw down 100% of our CO2 emissions globally, annually, and even better. I got interested in hemp uh, through realizing that hemp, if hemp was used as a rotational cash crop on 10% of farmlands that would draw down 64% of our CO2 emissions, assuming you're growing two crops a year. Nevertheless, it's a massive amount. And from that, we can produce many, many things. And then I became aware of what you could produce with hemp. I've been working with a professor of microbiology in China called Dong. And he spent the last four years isolated two microbes, which can generate hydrogen from organic waste. We are now looking at producing hydrogen from hemp. The liquid residue is a very powerful organic fertilizer. The solid residue uh, of the hemp we can use to make building material. And I'm also working with another company called Change Climate, which has produced a very strong fireproof bioresin from renewable sources. It's so strong that a 6 mm thick sheet will stop a bullet. That was tested by a ballistics company. We are using the resin with the hemp herd to make an extremely strong panel, which is self-supporting without any building frame or reinforcement. We are making uh, environmentally friendly ecopods. The surface will be covered with a solar collecting film. Uh, we're also using one of the most efficient wind turbine designs. So people can live off the, off the grid. The uh, first uh, thing we're doing is the flat, flat pack hemp home which basically has got 15 years R&D. It can be made and shipped anywhere in the world. And then we've got the EcoPod, which is a more organic shape. And then we're hoping to go to 3D printing using hemp and our resin. Well, we're in the um, process of with a, yes. with an introduction like this, there is a very little space to, <laughs> to ask oh. you the following questions. <laughs> Okay, well, ask me questions. No, no, fantastic. Talk. I am very pleased, Mr. Christo, of your self-introduction, your projects that yeah. are basically a, 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 an example for other countries to follow, especially when it comes to research and development. There is so much to discover from this plant. Um, uh, tell us about you, your, your thinking about the prohibition Thinking about what? About the prohibition, 80 years of prohibition. Oh, okay, well, sure. Well, uh, interestingly, um, in King Henry VIII's day, it was a crime not to grow hemp. Uh, you had to have uh, a third of an acre growing hemp, and that hemp was used 
to make the sales for the Spanish Armada. Um, then the prohibition came in and uh, it was all squashed, but now prohibition for hemp is really not an issue because it's very low in THC and uh, it's not, you know, it's opening up worldwide. People realize how valuable a crop it is. America is leading the charge and, uh, uh, you know, CBD oil for um, therapeutic yeah. medical use uh, has many, many benefits. Uh, so it's a very lucrative uh, crop. Um, I'm working with a group called Southern Cross Hemp. Mm -hmm. They're making CBD oil and we're going to work together to do some research to develop a whole range of skin products and to include it in a protocol that I'm thinking of with uh, uh, for uh, cancer treatment along with other natural treatments. Yeah, so anything, prohibition is not... Yes, I, I agree. Anything that the plant is involved is good for humanity. Oh, absolutely. And um, it's quite extraordinary that uh, things from toilet paper to airplane bodies can be made. Yes. But just this morning, I communicated with the University of New South Wales professor uh, and he, uh, Hopkins, he, um, the, the New South Wales University team have broken the world record for the most efficient solar car on the planet, 5.5 uh, kilowatts per hundred kilometers. But they're very interested in using our resin because it's so strong and light and uh, combining it with the outer fiber, the blood bask, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, to make car bodies. And then the builder who we're doing the uh, hemp flat pack houses um, is making a prototype using the hemp resin, uh, coating it with uh, a solar collecting film, and all, even the glass will be able to collect solar energy. So we're hoping that most of the energy for running the car will come from the sun directly. But of course, we'll use battery storage and augment it with uh, a plug-in supply of electricity. But that's, uh, you know, some of the things we're doing, which is very exciting. Thank you for copying me in the email. And I hope uh, we also um, materialize our project here in, in Western Australia about the hemp car. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, that's all about collaboration and uh, hemp, obviously, the more we grow, the better it is for everybody. It, it detoxifies soil, it doesn't need much uh, uh, fertilizer, pesticides, etc. cetera. Uh, it, it's very thrifty with water. You mostly need water in the first six weeks, uh, but we're also working with a French company that have an amazing water crystal when you add water, it expands 300 times its original volume. Oh, really? And we're hoping to um, start planting hemp in the desert. Uh, you only need to water the crop twice through the growing cycle. And uh, you can also add an organic fertilizer. So we're hoping to use land that wouldn't otherwise be productive for growing hemp. Right, and yeah. I will be speaking to an investor very soon who wants to scale up big time to grow a lot of hemp. That is extraordinary. So I guess uh, I must ask you, do you truly believe that we are in the dome of a new circular economy, a new way of thinking to do business? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I mean, as I said, the circular economy, you take the hemp, you produce the hydrogen, you produce the fertilizer, you produce the building materials for cars, planes, boats, you know, uh, buildings, etc. As you know, um, the thermal properties of hemp are so good that you basically don't need to heat or cool a building. Uh, heating and cooling buildings is about 30% of greenhouse gas emissions. Yes. Every square meter of a hemp building embodies 35 kilograms of, uh, of carbon dioxide. So we're not only drawing down carbon, but we're preventing the emissions being produced as well. So it's just such a logical thing to do. Yes. Uh, and uh, by making buildings, hemp buildings uh, on site, on the factory, you can increase the production capacity and you're bringing hemp buildings into the 21st century. And furthermore, if you can use hemp 
through three D printing, that will really give you incredibly beautiful aesthetic organic shapes, which can be designed by somewhere like an architect and sent to the factory. The computer then produces the building, and you can make it in segments, and then you ship it anywhere in the world, and you assemble it on site. Have you? Having said that, um, I believe that the um, uh, your resin that you are uh, in currently manufacturing is, is it breathable for the houses? It is what breathable. Does it have the same properties as the as, as the hempcrete? I think you said, does it breathe? Does it, does it breathe? Yes. Is it? Breathable? Yeah. Okay. Well, when you convert it to a resin, no, it won't. It won't. But um, no, you can't have everything. The, the, the limitations with hempcrete using lime as a binding agent is it's usually done through form work and then uh, tamponading it down, which is very labor intensive and it increases the cost. Um, our resin uh, means that you need a thinner panel very light, very durable, but no, it won't breathe. But you can't have everything. But we don't need any framework. We don't need any reinforcement. We don't need, uh, we can build it off site and ship it in a shipping container anywhere in the world. And already I have people all around the world interested. And if any of the people viewing this uh, webinar are interested, you can leave my. Um, Email, which I'll tell you now is growing, G R O W I N G, B for Bob, D for Dad, at gmail.com. If you, anyone listening is interested in becoming a distributor anywhere in the world, please contact me, growing, B D, at gmail.com. So we really have a network of people all around the world who are expressing interest and keep asking me, is it ready? Is it ready? We have to make sure, as you know, that it's safe. We're doing the fire testing, the um, you know the structural integrity, etc., and uh, that's going through Queensland University, so it'll be certified according to the very high uh, Australian Building Standards Code. And when that's ready, we will then we have the finance, so we will start producing in Australia, and uh, happy to take orders uh, when it's ready. And of course, uh, to work with people. To distribute to different parts of the world, which is um, something that sounds very fantastic, especially when uh, the quality of the products will be certified by by the country itself, which is the it has to be yeah. the branding for all Australian products. This is what I most like about uh, working in Australia. Yes, it's a blessing for everyone. Um, Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Christo, just to add value to the to the uh, to our chat, I have been talking for some time with an engineer in Canada. He is an artificial intelligence engineer, a specialist in that area, and I'm com totally convinced that any project that we want to do in hemp in the hemp area in Australia, we it's gotta be involved with in robotics and uh, artificial intelligence. We don't have the labor capacity uh, to compete with South in, with the rest of the Southeast Asian countries uh, because of the labor is very well expensive. And secondly, yeah. um, uh, we must create a whole new new infrastructure in order to compete, to satisfy our demand and compete with the rest of the world. If we don't look at that yes. way, we're going to be uh, starting really bad our industry by itself. That's my thinking and yeah. uh, I'm sharing with you. Yeah, there's, there's just one last thing. We're also going to be making uh, biochar from hemp, which has got great properties. We can use that matrix that's left behind to put uh, our soil microbes to enrich the soil productivity, water retention, nutrient cycling. But we can also use it. I've developed an organic weed killer. So you can put the weed killer, which is also a fertilizer, uh, in between the rows. The biochar adds carbon to the soil 
And then because the weed killer is inside, it will slowly leach out and suppress any new weeds growing up. We need to get rid of Roundup as soon as possible. It's related to 39 illnesses. Uh, so we, we've got to stop that. And I've been working for many years now developing and refining different ways of using my products for uh, controlling weeds, but also fertilizing at the same time. Well, Mr. Cristo, it has been a great pleasure talking to you and listening all your dreams, your projects, uh, the expectations of the times to come. Um, it's a blessing. It's a blessing for everyone that having you in this part of the world, especially in Australia. Thank, thank you. Thank you for inviting me and thanks for the uh, interview. Thank you. All the best. Likewise. We'll talk bye. later, Roman. Thank bye. you very much. Okay, bye.